Hey guys. Um, so I'm going to get started. Um, my name is Alexandra Atzel, and this is a presentation on adopting Angular in existing applications. Um, a little about me, I am a UI developer. I work for a company called Effective UI. Um, we're a digital agency, and we specialize in a lot of complex user experience uh, experiences and um, web and mobile applications. So we like to say that we're adopting technology to humans, not the other way around. And as a UI developer here, I frequently or mostly work on client projects. And sometimes clients will come to us with an existing code repository and we need to build off of that. Or sometimes we'll build something and just deliver it to them. And um, there's a third scenario which I've had experience with recently where we kind of work alongside developers at a client company and help them to build out their application. So, um, a quick disclaimer. A lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about in the next 25 minutes, some of it might sound kind of obvious to you or like this is obviously an Angular best practice and I've heard it before and that's probably true. However, there are a lot of things that I've seen in client applications where people are starting to use Angular and they're not fully incorporating it and they're not using it very well. So while a lot of this seems like common knowledge, it definitely bears repeating. Um, and just a secondary disclaimer, I base this on work I've done recently in Angular 1.2, so there are still references to scope. Um, ideally, I'd be working in a greater version and be readying myself more for Angular 2. Um, but for the purpose of this, in a general way, you can kind of just take this and apply it to Angular 2 eventually. So, the problem. So what I've come across a lot recently is where I'm working with a client on an application and they, with limited time, money, and resources, started to build an application in Angular and they're new to Angular. So we have a bunch of developers, they haven't used Angular before and they're pretty limited in how much time and money they can spend on it. And when this happens, a lot of times developers will start to use Angular, it's taking too long for them to figure out the proper way to do things, and they start to fall back to things they already know, which may or may not align with Angular concepts and may or may not follow best practices. And in my experience, a lot of times they don't. So, what happens then is I, or a developer in a similar situation, I'm stuck trying to refactor the base code I've been given that isn't necessarily set up great. And I also have limited time and budget and resources and I'm have, I have to build out new functionality in addition to fixing up some of this existing stuff. So you kind of have a scenario where you're trying really hard to build an app that's modular and scalable and testable and it's just not there right now. And you really need to make some changes in order to get it to that point. So a lot of times there are several items where I see them all the time. Um, one thing is placing multiple objects in a single file. We always hear that we shouldn't do this. One controller per file, one directive per file, et cetera. Um, I also tend to see a lot of global variables. We're just hoping that when we're in this controller file and we call a global object that it's already existing somewhere in another file that somebody else created. Uh, not using Angular's built-in services. A lot of times I see people using set timeout instead of the dollar sign timeout service, all sorts of things like that. Um, there's also a problem where people put business logic in controllers. When you're coming into Angular as an, as, and you're new to it, it's usually the first thing you would do is wrap everything in controllers because that's how you get it onto your templates, right? But as a result, a lot of stuff ends up getting thrown into the controllers that really shouldn't be there. Um, there's also repeating base objects, config objects, constant values, things like that, and repeating a lot of functionality throughout different controllers or different services. So, with all of these issues, what is the best way to get around them, and how do you most effectively mitigate some of these problems? Um, and the one way I like to explain this, um, particularly to people who don't develop or use Angular, but 
it's applicable anyway, is that you want to take advantage of everything that it offers you. Because if you're building a bookshelf, and I don't because I'm really not good at like construction or hardware, but if you were building a bookshelf, you wouldn't do every single thing with a hammer, right? I mean, you need to cut two by fours, you need to build out your shelves, you need to screw things in place. You don't use just one tool for the job. You use everything that's available in your toolbox. So we need to use everything that Angular gives us. So where do we start? And the first step that I've taken in these kinds of situations is to break up all the files. Um, this is relatively simple to do. Um, and if you just make sure that other people aren't editing the files, you're trying to move around, I mean, it's pretty common sense, you can figure it out. But you wanna take the slight amount of time this will take because it's worth it in the long run. If you keep throwing all your controllers in a single file or you know, every controller and service that has to do with this one section in the same file, as the app scales, you're gonna have something that's a mess. You're gonna have thousands of lines of code. You're gonna not know where things are and it just makes your life more difficult in the future. Um, and additionally, you should organize your files by feature rather than type. So instead of something like this, which doesn't seem that bad right now, we have a controllers folder, a services folder, directives, views. It's not really that bad. I have my login controller and my search controller, the services for each. It's pretty easy to find them. But as this scales out, it's gonna get more cumbersome to, ha cumbersome to have to do that. And if I'm working on the login section, I don't want to have to go into multiple folders in order to edit those files. I want them all to be in the same place. So instead, we want to do something like this. Um, now, I'm not strictly suggesting this particular file naming convention or folder structure, but you do want to group these things by feature so that the related controller, service, template are all in the same folder and you can easily access them together as you're working on them. And regardless of what you end up doing in terms of choosing a convention for grouping your files or naming your files, you definitely need to make sure that the entire team and everyone touching the code base is going to follow those same conventions. Because I've seen that happen too, where one developer likes to do login.control.js shorthand like I have here. And another developer likes to say login.controller.js. So in different folders, you have different setups and it just becomes more confusing in the future. So once we do that, then you can take the next step. And in our situation, we have a ton of global variables. Um, we also have a couple libraries that are being included and we're not really injecting them in any way with dependency injection. We're just kind of assuming they're there. So for example, I have a controller here and I'm using moment.js to format my dates and times, right? So I have a start time and end time. I don't know at this point what moment I'm referring to. I'm hoping and assuming it's the moment library, but I don't know for sure. And I don't actually know if it exists yet or if I pulled it in. I don't have anything kind of managing my dependencies um, or injecting them properly as I need them. So it's kind of fragile here. Instead, we can try something like this where we wrap moment in a service. So we can inject the dollar sign window service and grab the global moment object. And then we can inject that into our controller. The controller code stays the same. I'm still setting the start time and end time in the same way I did. I'm just injecting moment now and I know that that's the moment I want, that that's the single moment object I have as a service. And this is now uh, testable because before there's no real way to mock out moment in a unit, in a unit test. But now that we're injecting it properly, we can mock it out when we instantiate the controller in our tests. Oops. Uh, and you can do this for custom objects too. Um, and this is something I've seen when you're not familiar with Angular and maybe you don't actually have a lot of services. Uh, people start creating global objects that the controllers refer to. So something like this where I have a controller for my zoo um, and I have a zoo object that'll get my animals and store them for me, but I don't have anything really safeguarding that. I have nothing making sure that zoo exists before I try to call zoo.getAnimals in my controller. So instead, we do the same thing and we wrap it in a service. So, or a factory. Same kind of deal depending on what your current needs are. But 
Now I can inject that in the same way we injected Moment, and I know it's there in my controller, and again, it's more testable, because now we can mock it out. So, um, once we have that taken care of, then we can start to look at some of the other things we're doing within these services we've now created. So, uh, a lot of times what I see is people forgetting that you have a bunch of these built-in services. Um, and in, in this particular example, the dollar sign HTTP service that Angular gives us. So, this is something I've seen before where developers, again, they're trying to use Angular, they're not totally sure how to do it properly, and so they kind of fall back to what they already know. So we have a jQuery Ajax call in here instead of using the HTTP service. So this isn't really something that we can test easily. We can't really mock out Ajax this way. So a better way to do this would be in this uh, address book service factory to inject the HTTP service. And we don't, we have to change a little bit of our code here but this way we can mock it out and we're properly using what Angular's already given us. And I'm not gonna list all the built-in services, but these are a couple that I've noticed people miss before, where they're using timeout, set timeout instead of dollar sign timeout, the global document or window objects instead of the services that Angular gives us. So you wanna make use of Angular's version instead. Next, we wanna start trying to get rid of any code duplication we have. So I've seen a lot of times we'll have multiple controllers and each of them will eventually interact with a service that makes an API call. And they all have like a base object they use. So I'm gonna submit a form, I have, to, I have an object with all my form data and I need to pretty much build that from a common base. And we don't wanna to have to create that in every single controller. And then if we have to change it, change it in every single controller, right? We wanna keep things dry, don't repeat ourselves. So for example, I have a pet store. Um, multiple actually, um, it's an entire chain. And in my first pet store, I have a cat and a dog, right? And they each have a name property and a type property because I need to keep track of the types of animals I have in my pet store. Right now I only have cats and dogs. I'm thinking of expanding into guinea pigs, okay? And then I have my second pet store where I have another cat. So if you notice here, when I declare what type the animal is, I'm using a simple string. And in here we have a string with the term cat twice, which isn't that bad, but eventually I'm going to have a lot more stores and a lot more pets. And then what happens when suddenly my manager tells me, oh wait, we need to be a little more scientific and more specific. So we're not going to label them cat and dog, we're gonna label them feline, feline and canine. So now I have to change this in like 80 different places. So what would be better is to use an angular value. So we can create this pet types value and it has cat and dog properties. I have them all caps because I'm considering these constants for my particular app. And then we can inject that value into each controller that we need it. So my code doesn't really change that much, but now instead of specifying the string here, I'm just telling it to use the pet types.cat string or pet types.dog. And now it's a bit abstracted. I only have to change it in one place. It's less redundant. So taking all of that into account, then what we want to do is try to make sure we're really, really not duplicating code. So something I found that really works well is um, a lot of times in my company, we work with um, like financial institutions or businesses, and in those kind of apps, you often have multiple types of things where you have services uh, that work in the same way, they call endpoints that are all structured in the same way, but they're not the exact same endpoints or services, so you end up repeating a lot of stuff. That's probably not a clear explanation, but this should make a little more sense. So I have a pet store app still, right? And I have a cat service and a dog service. And if you look here, I have a get list and a get info function on each of them. It's a little cut off here, but they're basically the same. The only differences here are that get list 
calls the cat's endpoint, and in the dog service, get list calls the dog's endpoint. Same with get info. But all the other guts here are the same, and I've abbreviated because there's really no need to make this up, but we can assume the success and error functions are gonna be the same as well. We're not gonna do, wanna do anything different. These are the same types of things. They're all animals. So, instead of setting it up this way, what we can do is create a base service and then extend it for each specific use case. So, what I'm doing instead is here, I'm creating a generic pet service. And I still have my get list and get info functions. But instead, I'm passing in the endpoint I want to use. And my get list and get info functions refer to that parameter instead. And I just return the entire pet service. So the main structure is the same, but this is much more generic. And now, my services are much more dry. I can simply inject the pet service and then create an instance of it for my cat service and my dog service, specifying the endpoints. And now, I only need to test the code that actually makes the calls to the API once in the generic service. And then here, I just need to test that that generic service is injected properly and called. And you can do the same kind of thing with controllers. So, we can create a base controller and extend it to replace something like this. So, here I have, again, my pet store analogy. Um, and I have a cat control and a dog control. And they're a little different than the earlier example. But I'm going to have a page on my website where I can look at a certain type of animal. And then I can click a button to get data about a particular cat. And I, I'm going to have functionality so that my employees can add a new cat to our database. Same with dogs. So. Right now, my cat service is injected in the cat controller, and my dog service is injected in the dog controller, but again, if we look, they look almost identical. It's a different service, but that's pretty much the only difference here. Otherwise, everything is the same. And again, this is the kind of thing I've seen in apps working with client developers. So this is something that does happen and that we kind of need to work around. So instead of something like this, which is very repetitive, we're basically testing the same kind of thing multiple times, we're writing the same thing multiple times, and any changes, we're doing multiple times. So instead, what we can do is create this base controller, which I'm calling a pet control. And um, we can inject animal service. And that's more, this is more a, a placeholder. This isn't a controller that would be used on its own. It would only be um, inherited by a child controller and used that way. So animal service will just be whatever we give it when we instantiate the controller. And then I have my get data function and my add pet function and it just refers to whatever service we've been given. And now here, in my specific controllers, I inject the controller service and then whatever particular pet service I need. So in my cat control, I can instantiate the controller here, extend the scope, and specify that the animal service or pet service I'm using is the cat service. And then, because in my case, I know that my templates already expect an add cat function, I can simply take the step here to reassign the add pet function to add cat so I don't have to change my templates as well. Because again, we're working with a situation where you have limited time and limited budget. You can't really refactor and fix everything, so you're taking these incremental steps to try to make it as aligned with best practices as you can without taking all the time in the world. Um, and again, same thing here with dog service. And this is simpler because we don't need to test the actual functions. We can test them with the base controller and then just test the specific instance here. And it's much cleaner. So, in case you zoned out for a minute or weren't paying attention, pay attention now. <laughs> um, some main takeaways from this. So when you're working in a situation like this, you're trying to incrementally improve an app without fully rewriting it because you really don't have the time or resources, um, you want to do a couple of things. You want to stop using global objects. Just don't. They're not good. Um, you want to use all the tools that Angular provides you. So make use of those built-in services. 
don't use jQuery AJAX calls, don't use the raw set timeout, don't use the document and window objects, use the services instead. Uh, keep your business logic out of controllers, always. Abstract it out into a service, however you need. Um, extend base services and controllers to minimize code duplication because you, again, don't want to have to write the same thing all the time. And don't repeat yourself, ever. If you're writing the same thing multiple times, there's probably something you can do to abstract it out and make your code cleaner and your life easier. Um, I have a coworker who was telling me the other day that developers are lazy and the only thing constant in development is change. And so to mitigate that, we want to kind of try to roll with this and just take the incremental steps we have here to make things better in whatever time we have. So that's all I have for you. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, my name is Alexandra Atzel again, and I'll be in the back room to answer questions if anybody wants to talk. So thanks. Thanks.